Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Movement Radio. I am Chip Hazard. Cheers, folks. It's Talon Williams. I'm Roger Sierra. Uh, we got a good little episode, hopefully, here for you guys to enjoy. Um, we're going to go over, obviously, the aftermath of WrestleMania, um, Ross NXT and SmackDown. Um, also talk about our weekend, which was at Huntsville. But as always, we got to start with self with a little juiciness of Reddit story. Um, I also could tell Talon's great story about the man's hand in the pocket. <laughs> oh, uh, but no, uh, that uh, was that could not have happened at a better time. <laughs> I not the fact that the man didn't have his hand but we just talked about the decision <laughs> no the fact that it happened to me that's the that's the funny part oh no it would have been a chip i still would have laughed oh yeah <laughs> it was like right literally after we just talked about the same situation pretty much right the same situation happening but R- pretty yeah much. pretty much the only thing is i didn't walk over anyway get to this <laughs> juiciness and then we'll talk about it um so today i'm reading from the today i effed up subreddit um oh, wow. this one this one was from a few years ago, but it also won the uh, F up of the month. So it's a really juicy one. Um, Didn't know Reddit did those types of things, but okay. Yeah, they do um, legacies and all that kind of stuff. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not uh, on Reddit all the time. So, you know. Um, let me see. Let me put that. Up. All right. So it starts off by saying So I'm currently a fourth year computer science student at a pretty respectable university and was looking to graduate this semester. Now, one of the classes I was taking was a class in modern advancements and trends in the field of technology. While the class didn't require too much heavy lifting, it still was a higher level one and required a good amount of work. For our final, our professor had assigned us a 20 page research paper into a current or possible future technology of our choice within the field. And I did my paper on helium three power generation. I worked my ass off on this paper and in the end was super proud of it. The papers were due last night at midnight and held off on submitting my final draft till the end of, till the end to get it as clean as possible. Now this is where I messed up big time. So let me tell you about myself. I don't work a normal job. I tried it in my first year of school and I really didn't like it. I've worked internships when they came up, but outside of that, I really didn't work. This and being a student really doesn't mix well, though, so I had to make money some way. So for the past three years, I've gotten gotten by on writing hardcore erotic on commission. So specifically for furries, I would write anything, any fetish, any premise, anything. In some parts of that community, I became really popular. At one point, I was making $2,500 on Patreon along with the amount I charge to my customers. Wow. Wow. <laughs> hey, I don't knock the hustle. Go ahead. Keep reading. Hey, for 2500 in college? Hey. You like a king. Right? Um, am I proud of this? No. I have written some really disgusting stuff, but it paid the bills, and the money was too good to pass up. I got to feel I know where this is going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Sorry. Keep going. I told myself the minute I got a real job, I was cutting and running from this work. Well, this brings up, this brings us to last night. I had not gotten any sleep for the past few nights. I had multiple projects due that end up that, ooh, I had multiple projects due that in the span of a few days. That doesn't, I had multiple projects due that, that's not correctly written. I should say I had multiple (laughs) projects due in the span of a few days. There you go. I was running on nothing but coffee and Rockstar. I was nothing more than a walking course and wanted to do nothing but sleep. I ended up doing my last read over of my final paper and submitted it before sleeping. However, instead of submitting my final paper, I somehow submitted one of my commissions I was working on. This commission is not light either. It is almost 10 pages long and contains a variety of things, including vor and scat. Oh, what? So I went to bed. Submissions for the final locked. Oh, so I went to bed. Submissions for the final locked, and my academic career was sent to death then and there. When I woke up in the morning, I checked my grades, 
for my other classes before noticing an email from my professor. All I said was to come to his office after class today. I wanted to die so bad. I don't know how I'm going to explain why instead of a final, I submitted a hardcore erotic story of a wolf man jacking off in a dragon stomach. But yeah, I messed up big time. Oh, fuck. Um, so let me read some of the comments first. Wait, uh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Because I had a question. Because you had said something. You said something, Vor and Scat. I'm unfamiliar with these terms. What exactly is that? Well, scat is poop. Uh, okay, gross. I don't know what Vor is, and I'm not looking that up. Me nope. neither. I just figured you had the information in front of you, but okay. Go nah, ahead. I'm not going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I know about scat is because of Daniel Tosh joke. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So one of the, the top comment is, so uh, how does one get into writing $2,500 worth of erotic on Patreon asking for a friend? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hey, I He's guess if you're, good, if you're a good enough writer. Hey. Um, the next comment says, tell them the truth. All of what all of what you explained, be sure to bring the real documents you meant to submit and ask him as an adult, not a simpering I think they meant to say whimpering, uh whimpering kid, if he would accept that you'd messed up and take your actual submission for the class. It can't hurt and in fact maybe refreshing to him for to see a student take responsibility for their own mistakes. Um it says the next one was a comedic one saying Professor, the professor going, uh, so where can you get me more of this? <laughs> Plot twist, the commission, the professor commissioned the work. Uh, <laughs> but no, um, uh, all the other ones are just more comic stuff. But there is a update. Okay. So we get to find out what happened. Yes, tell us. Tell us. So it says, well, I just left his office and I still want to die. Not as much, though. I took some advice from here and printed my paper out and had it with me. And I won't lie. When I sat down with him, I was already almost in tears from the stress and embarrassment. And I guess he picked up on that because he tried to be as nice as possible and told me to calm down and just explain what happened. I ran down pretty much everything I said here. While he didn't agree with the avenue I was taking to make money, he understood why I was doing it. They can't knock the hustle, he said. Nope. Um, he had checked the submissions last night after the deadline, and my submission's name stuck out immediately. It was along the lines of customer commission second draft doc. Um, I've taken a class from him before and was an A student, so he guessed I had submitted the wrong file on accident. He told me he read the first page and realized it probably wasn't meant for him to read. So I gave him a copy. I gave him the copy I brought and he submitted it. I accepted it, sorry. He told me to email him the actual file and he would replace the one I had submitted and that he would pretend this never happened. He seemed to at least have a good sense of humor as he told me that what I had originally submitted was well written at least from what he read. Like I said, I still want to die right now. At least he understood that I'm an idiot and not malicious. And thanks, I guess, for the advice and help me through this nervous breakdown. Damn, man. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, okay. So so I have to give kudos to the professor for realizing A, it was a mistake, and B allowing this person to submit the actual paper. Um yeah, because there are a lot of professors that would not do that. Nope. Yeah. Well, he also had him as a student before, so he under probably already had that pre um tense sense of knowing, hey, just doesn't feel right or doesn't seem right. Yeah. So he's, yeah. He's a good enough kid, yeah. Yeah, I'll give him a second chance. Why not? You know. Also, twenty five hundred before commissions is outrageous still, in my opinion. Like that's crazy. Yeah. Does it say how far back the story goes? Is this like a recent story? Five, five years ago. Oh, so five years. So that's pre-pandemic. So it's yeah, twenty five hundred. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, hell, it's good money pre-pandemic. And that was his fourth year um, of 
of his fourth year of studying. I don't know if he was graduating or if he was doing undergrad or what, but yeah. Interesting. But yeah, um, let's move on. Um, yeah. <laughs> real quick, let's um, do our let's do our wrestle post WrestleMania wrap up or recap or roll over whatever we want to talk about. Um, let me think. Monday opened up with the most awkward and embarrassing thing they have done in a while. Was that that was the opener, right? The yes, Rock Cody uh, opener. Yeah. The, yeah. That, the that was our the hour long promo so it started with triple h then he called out um cody. cody uh cody done his thing then the rock comes out and they have this like super awkward uh, and you could tell it was awkward like just by the way that uh cody was was reacting to the whole thing yeah uh you mean acting he's, yeah, well, he's yeah, an actor yeah. remember he's an actor yeah, he yeah, took acting yeah. classes yeah. he got like I don't know it's just the whole thing felt the whole thing forced felt, felt stupid thank you I was gonna I was gonna gonna say forced but also at the same time it felt awkward as hell from the standpoint that like did you guys not rehearse this shit or did Cody know that The Rock was gonna come out and say these things and it pretty much became like a backhanded compliment battle in a, in a way you know, but then again, The Rock was like, hey, I got to go for a little while, but when I come back, whether you're the champion or not, I'm coming back for you. We're oh, looking forward to it. Like, all right. pretty much tells us that Cody's going to hold this title to WrestleMania again. I don't think so. I think it'll probably end up, I think what's probably going to end up happening is it'll probably end up being him and Rock at SummerSlam for the title. Um, and then, I don't, know, I don't know because uh, no, that's summertime. There's so many movies that he's going to have to be do press tour for. Yeah, that's right. I forgot because he is going back to making uh, what Fast is it? 14. Fast 14 or Jumanji 3 or whatever he's making. Doom 2. Yeah. Who knows? Well, he, he also put something out. I, I can't remember if it was on uh, his Twitter page or his uh, Instagram page. Um, but he was, you know, putting something out that said preparing for WrestleMania 41. So there's that. Yeah, read read into that how you want. Um, Cody Roman, whoever. Then the, I mean, we'll get to it when we get to it. But the Bloodline storyline has been has took a very interesting turn. Not even this night. It's not even this night, sir. It's not even Monday. Yeah, we're we're not even there yet. That's what I'm saying. That's why I stopped. That's why I stopped myself. You know, we opened opened up with uh, an hour and forty two minutes of Cody Rose blowing people. Um. Literally having one of the most embarrassing segments again on Raw, um, well, topping yeah, up and, his crying for his mama one. Yeah, and the fact that the whole first hour of Raw was commercial free, and they chose to do an hour long promo segment commercial free, like instead of putting on good matches. Yeah. Um, but speaking of good matches, after that embarrassment, um, Cody Rhodes thankfully leaves the ring, and we actually get a match, and we have Shinsuke. Versus the NXT champion Ilya Dragunov. Yes. Um, really good match. Um, all of a sudden, Ilya doesn't have broken fingers or a broken hand or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, after two days, three days, two days. It was three. Saturday. Two days. No, yeah. It was Saturday, right? Yeah. It was yeah. Saturday. It was Saturday. It was Saturday, yeah, it was Saturday yeah. afternoon. Saturday afternoon. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So two days, his hand apparently completely healed. Um, wrestling. Um, <laughs> Them but, damn uh, Russians. <laughs> but Ilya actually picked up a really good win in a very physical battle. Um, yes. The boys were laying lumber into each other. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was nice. It was nice but, to witness. <laughs> um, Corey, uh, Corey Graves and Wade Barrett were put in, because that's, that's Raw's commentators, right? No, uh, Raw's, no, 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 no. Pat McAfee and... Uh, Pat McAfee and, yeah, Pat McAfee and Michael Cole, because yeah. Michael Cole was telling Pat McAfee who Ilya is. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, McAfee don't watch NXT. It hardly ever if he does because he's mainly focused on the main roster stuff, you know, which now is crazy. No longer because, NXT. Yeah, now he's no longer NXT. He doesn't watch it so much, you know. Um, but after that, um, we go to the Judgment Day celebration. 
um, Rhea and Damian Priest, and obviously the Judgment Day are all there. They're out there celebrating the fact that uh, Mommy retained and now Poppy has a title. Yep. And lo and behold, oh, all rise like, for the Judgment Day. Here comes. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Since you want to go ahead and intro, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> go. So after that, sneaking in from behind is our truth claiming he brought the title back to the Judgment Day after taking the tag title from the Judgment Day. <laughs> um, and then he's telling the Judgment Day that it's cool because he's going to try and convince the Miz to join the Judgment Day. <laughs> um, and then Judgment Day, what was it? JD, um, I don't know what his last name. Oh, I don't. J J Jordan, JD Jordan Madonna. Devlin. Jordan Devlin. Um, yeah, Jordan Devlin. Just say Jordan Devlin. Yeah, JD um, is doing his thing where he's getting our truth face, blah, blah. Miz comes out. They have a little thing, but then they, the Judgment Day, get the upper hand on uh, Truth and Miz. Actually, our Truth challenges the Judgment Day, the three members who don't have a title, and that's when they get jumped. And then, then in the middle of the match, our Truth is um, doing his uh, childhood heroes moves. John Cena over here doing the shoulder blocks and everything like that, getting it going. But before all this, R Truth teased that they had a partner that Miz and R Truth had a partner that could not be seen. Obviously, referring to Little Jimmy because Little Jimmy, see yeah. Little Jimmy. <laughs> um, and Miz even asked him, "Is this person real or not?" Because <laughs> he's not tagging with Little Jimmy. Yep. Um, Good callback. <laughs> uh, it's such a great callback. Yes. But Truth actually says, "No, this person's real." Just wait, and they get they get a good you know a good match going back and forth in a sort of a handicap tag match that turns into a six man. Yeah, uh, but no, um, Cena comes and makes a save. Uh, crowd's still pumped up. It's a pretty good moment. Then Truth, Miz, and Cena hit tandem uh, protoplexes, five knuckle shuffles, and attitude adjustments, and get the win. Um, and Miz almost drops, uh, what was it Finn or JD on top of Dominic? No, I think it was Dom on JD. top of JD. Dom on yeah. top of JD. There we go. <laughs> um, from there, we get another Cody Rose promo for some reason. Um, the one about him getting the, the gift to give him after he won a title. Because mm -hmm. um, we need to see more of him. For it's so weird that you you get the guy, you make him a champion, but you have to promote him so hard to get him over, even though he's champion already. It's so weird. Um, up there, up, it's up there. Up next, we have um, newly crowned, or she never totally lost it. The NXT Women's Champion Roxanne Perez going against Indy Hartwell in sort of a flat match. Um, it it was. Um, they sort of had any job out to Roxanne in a pretty bad way. She got a few moves here and there, but I mean, Roxanne is half of Indy's height. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think Indy's one of the top, Indy, I think is one of the tallest females that they have there. Yeah. She's like six, two or six, three, something like that. She's the same height as Austin theory. It's the only thing I remember. Yeah. Austin's six, two, I think. Um, and then from there, um, we have an announcement saying the draft is coming to SmackDown and Raw. Everybody's up for grabs. Um, I'm trying to think. When is it? It's not this week, right? It's next week? Uh, let me look real quick while you... I think it is the week of... Yeah, the 26th and the 29th, I believe, is when it is. Yes. Yeah. So it'll, it'll start on SmackDown and then go to Raw, which is backwards for the first time i think right uh i think so i think it typically starts on raw, raw. and then moves to uh, smackdown. smackdown those yeah. look interesting hush i didn't say nothing i just said those look interesting <laughs> i'm gonna try to spoil i ain't spoiling shit <laughs> uh, if people haven't watched about it this this thing's coming out on thursday i don't understand yeah why but I've... that's next week's conversation yeah <laughs> All right, I'll shut and, up. And then um, from there we have Sami Zayn in the ring. Um, Imperium comes out, do their Imperium heel thing about you know we're 
trying to do this for Gunther, blah, 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 blah. Chad Gable comes out to make the save. Um, and at the end of it, it's pretty much like, I want to be the first to get a title shot at the IC title, blah, 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 blah. Really good match overall between those four guys. But what do you expect from four workhorse men that can pretty much do everything? Right. Um, from there, we move on to a squash match. Uh, Jade Cargill is on Raw, even though she signed with SmackDown. She has a match on Raw, um, and she beats Chelsea Green in three minutes flat. Um, probably was actually it three less than minutes. I probably less than that. Um, the, I think it was like maybe with interest is all maybe five minutes. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, from there we have. Um, we have a fatal four number one contender um, match for Damian Priest. Almost forgot that. So it's Cody Rose, but it's for Damian Priest. Um, we have McIntyre, Bronson Reed, Ricochet, and Jay Uso. So obviously, out of those four, you can already tell the only possibilities are Drew McIntyre and Jay Uso. Um, and obviously Ricochet's there to do cool fancy flips and stuff like that. And Bronson Reed's there just to make everybody look stronger when they pick him up and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um pretty good Fatal Four though. Ricochet really did put on a show. Um, really enjoyed a lot of the stuff that he did. Now that Triple H is in charge, he's actually gonna sh- actually shine some more. Um, but during the Fatal Four, uh CM Punk is out at commentary again, right? No, I think he came from an under the ring. Oh, he did. You're right. He came in from the corner of the apron um, and distracted Drew McIntyre, who was about to put the finishing moves on Jay Uso. And Jay gets the big pin. So now main event Jay is number one contender in the first title defense for Damian Priest. Um, that's day of this recording. I can't remember if it was for Monday or for Backlash. Uh, uh, it, it'll be it'll be at Backlash. Oh, oh boo. Yeah. All right. Um, and after that, CM Punk goes out, uh, talks to the Philly crowd, gets them hyped up again. Um, doing the CM Punk thing. Said, I can't wrestle, but I can damn sure be in fierce in a bunch of matches all the time. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm trying to think, was there anything else from Monday that nope. I missed? That was the main. There was no other match, right? No, because he's really spending an hour with a promo. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, that was Monday. What do you guys thought of the supposedly best night of the year, the Mania, the Raw after Mania? And I mean, all in all, I thought it was a decent show. Um except for the the hour long opening promo. Like I get Cody has to come out new, you know, WWE champion, uh, or new undisputed WWE champion. I uh I, I like the play on changing the name of the title just a, a tiny bit uh, because when, when Roman was the champion, he was the uh, undisputed WWE Universal Heavyweight Champion. Uh, and then once he drops the belt, they drop uh, the the term Universal. So it's just undisputed WWE Heavyweight Championship now. Um, so I, I kind of... I like that, um, but I just, it, it, that opening segment was, I think it was too long, it was it was awkward with the whole back and forth with uh, Cody and The Rock, or yeah, Cody and The Rock, uh, but moving forward from there, I thought all in all, it was uh, a, a decent show, uh, not a ton of matches, but the matches that were meant to have time had time to play out and, and people get their stuff in. Like, obviously the, the Jade versus Chelsea match was not meant to be a long match. So. No, you're not going to have, you're not going to try to expose Jade this early still. Yeah. What, what about you Talon? Where you stand on uh, last Monday? Um, the Rock and Cody promo was way too long. They could have cut that in half and at least given us another one to two matches. Um, I like the fact that Triple H is allowing the champions of NXT to come and have a platform uh, to 
you know, be able to showcase their abilities. Obviously, Elia and Shinsuke had a really good match. Uh, Roxanne and Indy, like what we said a minute ago, it did come off flat. Um, and I don't know if it came off flat because of this whole weird inter inter uh conflict between Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell, where Indy's trying to be like this super white meat baby face and Candice LeRae is slowly but surely going to turn into the turn to the dark side eventually if she hasn't already but maybe that's why it, maybe that's why it came off flat to me I'm not sure uh the main event was very good I'm glad that Triple H and his vision for the company is allowing guys like Ricochet and Bronson to showcase by the way we didn't even mention the fact not that anybody cares but we didn't even mention the fact that Bronson Reed won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal but that thing hasn't really been uh, I get what's the word not popular is the wrong word to use significant I guess would be the word they, they, it hasn't been significant and since the first one and even then we didn't even know what it was what it was going to do for people's career afterwards but that's for a different discussion at least Bronson Reed can say that he has an Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal Trophy um, but yeah and the whole thing with CM Punk and the thing with Drew McIntyre this is eventually going to lead into a match between them if not at Backlash probably in Saudi Arabia we don't know um, uh, but we'll see. Will Will Punk be cleared by? I don't think he'll be cleared by Backlash. Uh, mm -hmm. What is his recovery time as of right now? Because he injured. Because he bank. injured. Well, he injured himself in January, correct? Mm -hmm. So if yeah, his injury. I think if, it'll be back uh, SummerSlam. SummerSlam or Money in the Bank? Which come? Yeah, money oh, in Money in the Bank. Sorry, yeah, Money in yeah. the Bank. Would he? Honestly, if I'm Punk, I don't want to be in the Money in the Bank ladder match. I'd rather wait and do something a little bit more because you don't want to, be, to be in the match that's not what i'm talking about i'm just saying if for whatever reason creative decides to put him in that ladder match i would be cautious to make that decision because again i mean with all due respect to cm punk he's no spring chicken anymore he gets injured too much nowadays you know not to say that he can't still go and you know be a productive member of the uh roster but you know you gotta you gotta what's the word there's, it's like you got to learn to pick your spots with Punk when it comes to him later. And he, because he is in the latter, he's closer to the end than he is at the beginning, in my opinion. But overall, to bring it back full circle here, I thought it was a very good Raw, other than the damn near hour and a half promo from Cody and The Rock. That's me. Yeah. Um, I think so. Moving on from there, we go to. Um, NXT, I don't, even, I don't even remember the order of what happened on NXT. Let me look that up because I completely forgot. What was the date? The ninth. Yes. Yes. Yes, the ninth. Yeah, you're right. Uh... I'm going down to try to look. I'm trying. I'm trying to find the results from. NXT. I'm getting freak. I got April second, but April 9th. This is dumb. Uh, huh. I wonder why it's not letting me look it up. Oh well, whatever. I guess I got to go to the YouTube channel just to get a. Obviously, not playing nothing. Obviously, but I'm trying to at least see what was. There we go. I got it. You got it. All right, um. Cool. So it started out with Kiana James and Izzy Dame defeating Fallon Henley and Kalani Jordan. I did not watch that. There was a trash six way turn into a trash tag yep. match. Um, definitely not worried about that. Um, probably the best thing that happened was um, the debut of Jay Malachi, now going by Javon Evans. Yes. Everyone gets uh, scripts for me known as Reggie. Um, so two high flyers with great gymnastic ability, but they were able to actually make a match. Um, yes. So um, AEW, get your notepads out and figure out how to do that like they do this. Um, but no, it was really good. <laughs> um, it actually looked there for a little bit. He ain't wrong. <laughs> actually looked like they were actually going to let um, scripts pick up the win there. Yeah, uh, it did look like that. I was about to be like, yo, we let this man 
really come up here, show off just to take an L. But I was like, you know what? Debuts don't always have to be great or don't have to be a win, but sort of can kill your momentum to begin with. So you have to be smart about it. But no, they did it right. Um, really just let show off what... Um, oh, it's going to be hard for me to remember. Uh, is it Ev- Javon Evans? Javon Evans. Evans. There you yes. go. I'm going to call him J Malachi. But, yeah, J Malachi, uh, yes. But no, he, he did all his great moves. The Malachi cutter. And there, or I guess you're going to call it the Evans cutter. Um, they're called it know. something, yeah. I just don't know how they're going to... I don't know if they'll let him continue doing that because essentially um the cody cutter is better because he jumps from the second rope 20 feet in the air yeah uh, to get the yeah. cutter i did like uh, his i did like that uh uh 540 360 uh spin move that he did where he was up he, he was up here he turned jumped turned and then did a complete 360 yeah. into the splash i was like that is dope dude that is um, that's that an awesome move then they had him um Got a backstage oh. promo afterwards, didn't he? Oh, was that was that the, was that was that was that a digital excuse exclusive? I think it was a digital exclusive, but what was yeah. his finisher? Um, cause was it the cutter? No, his finisher was the splash, that 360 splash. Okay, so that's what I was thinking. Cause it took me a second to realize, like, wait, what was his finisher? Yeah, um, he yeah, he jumped to the middle, jumped to the top. As he as he as he was jumping, he turned, and then as he was coming down, he did a complete 360 and then hit the splash. Yes, um, it was um pretty much a spiral uh spinal tap without or spinal without tap the, without spinal tap without the extra flip in there without the corkscrew portion it was just literally just a yeah, four, yeah oh, just 480 yeah. splash yeah. sideways splash yeah. um it and looked good though yeah it was a really good match and it made sense because he was able to do that got to move off quickly and then got out of the ring before out otm out the mud out the mud <laughs> yes right, first of all i finally saw those boys um okay uh but no. i don't know either but uh, for some, for those of you who don't know, Javon Evans is Jay Malachi who wrestled at um, DPW Deadlock Pro Wrestling. Um, I believe he sometimes did appearances at MLW. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I know he's done yeah. House of Glory sometimes too. But really, he's good done guy a couple. Of, he, he's done a couple of local shows in uh, the Georgia area as well. I'm pretty sure he is from Georgia. Yeah, no, that, yeah, he's from Atlanta. I think. I think he did a couple of uh, AML shows and a couple of. Uh, did he do a? I don't think he did a Southern Honor show. I want to say he did, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But, but yeah, well, he, he's he's local around these parts. <laughs> or was. familiar around these parts was, <laughs> yeah. But from there, we move on to Roxanne Perez challenging. She threw a challenge out to Natalia, and she beats Natalia because still even in this era, Natalia is not allowed to win. Um, I mean, just a really good match overall. It's just Natalia having an average match doesn't really do anything wrong, <laughs> right? Um, and then from there we go to the guy Chip and I talked about last week, uh, Luca Crucifino. We finally get to see him in a match. <laughs> um, we have the family versus the no quarter catch crew uh, with unfortunately no more Drew Gulak who. You said he was let go, or he he was uh, uh, released. released. Yeah, mm. released. yes, man. Um, for somebody for, for, um, for accusations for somebody em- over embellishing something that happened and took it out and made it. I mean, when you got to make yourself give yourself some attention somehow, I guess you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, he got fired over allegations, not an actual evidence of a crime well, that was committed. He like, did. He did come out and he he did post a a thing on. I can't remember again if it was Twitter or uh, Instagram, but um, he uh, he did say you know that uh, the allegations were somewhat true, um, but what happened is he went to shake hands with a group of people, and in the process of turning to shake someone's hand, his hand brushed against her sweatpants drawstring and that's um what got him fired uh mm-hmm. now that's a fist bump not yeah, <laughs> well and and you know not to say he's lying not to say she's lying but we all know there are there are three sides to every story there's his side her side and then in the middle is the truth somewhere right. um so 
Yeah. yeah. Um, that's why you don't shake hands with people in the business. Nope. Fist bump. I'm not going to do that. Just give them to the, do what I do. Give them a head nod and say, good to meet you. Yep. Um, from there, we have... Um, was it the promo next? Jay, Jada Parker versus oh, yeah. Brinley Reese. I don't even think I saw that match. Um, uh, I've never seen either of them work, so I don't. Jada, Jada Parker, is, is she with OTM as well? I have no idea. I don't know who she is. I don't know who he's going to do. I, I don't either. Um, but Jada Parker beat Brinley Reese. Um, congrats. Um cool. From there, we have also um, we have Axiom and Nathan Frazier having their rematch. Let me double check that. Uh, well, hold on. You forgot about the you forgot no. about the, uh, yeah, the promo. The, you forgot yeah, about so the, the promo segment. Yeah, yeah. The promo segment was actually before the girls match. You're right, or the yeah, the female match. But yeah. uh, Ivor from the Viking Raiders comes out to challenge Joe Buffemi because we care about the guy who's jobbed out for three years on the main roster now. And says he's solo. They have to do something with him. They um, big meaty men slapping meat, right? <laughs> that's what they're going for down now. The next thing now, I mean, that's what we're going to have to do with Obafemi. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, but from there, we had the women's match between Brian Lee Reese and Jada Park, whatever. And after that, we have the Wolf's Dogs rematching Axiom and Nathan Frazier. For the NXT yep. titles, and this time Axiom and Nathan Frazier pick up the tag titles. Mm-hmm. Yes, and then right after that, Axiom and Nathan are celebrating to get attacked by AOP in the final testament. Um, AOP going back down to NXT and claiming their titles back or challenging for the titles, trying to get the titles back. Um, like I said, as long as they have something for um, carrying across to keep doing, I'm okay with what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, and then from there we have um the Elia Trick Williams promo. Yeah, we have this another long ass promo, which really didn't make any sense because Trick challenges for the title, but Dragonov says you don't get to challenge for the title. You have to go and earn it. But that gives him a title shot because he put a stipulation on it. Yeah, if if so. Trick Williams wins, he has to leave NXT. No, if Trick Williams no, no. loses, it loses. Yes, believe in. See, yeah, that, you know what I meant. Um, but no, it was, it was weird. It was a weird promo, really cluttered. Um, and then Carmelo attacks him and says, "You got, you got to go through me first. Winner of us will get Elia." And they're battling a steel cage on on Tuesday. So, so that's what that ended up being. Yep, and after the camera stopped rolling. Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker come out um, and do a go away special for Braun. Um, he gets to go and talks about his experiences in the last few years in XT, how good he's been, and how he's going to love uh, doing what he's doing still, but miss everybody. Um, and yeah, that was NXT. Mm-hmm. Um, so then SmackDown. Well, before you get to SmackDown, uh, I mean, all in all, uh, again, I thought NXT, yeah, Yeah. Yeah. I I thought NXT was good. There was a showcase of some some newer talent that we uh, obviously uh, we haven't seen before, or if we have, we don't remember them. Um, You know, so uh, I I think they're doing a really good job of of showcasing, you know, some of the, the newer. Yes, some <laughs> yeah. of the newer, um, younger talent. So, yeah, I, I'm 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 excited for a lot of the prospects. I'm 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 happy to I'm happy. First of all, I'm happy to see Ben get his flowers. Him and Axiom, uh, you know, being the NXT tag chase. I don't like the fact that they didn't give him. Like, could you not have waited just one week to get the final testament and AOP to shut him down or whatever? But I under like, I don't get it, but I get it at the same time. Um. You know, I, but I get it because it makes sense. You were it, just it, on WrestleMania, so what you would expect yeah, to be down there. That's that's understandable, but that still, I mean, like, let them have a celebration. Um, other than that, man, yeah, I mean, it's good to see Javon Evans, aka Jay Malachi, you know, get some shine, the uh, you know, getting a chance to showcase his abilities and 
you know it's only up from it's only up from here as far as i'm concerned again the whole trick williams uh Ilya dragunov promo kind of didn't make sense but then it made sense and then carmelo hayes comes back out and says he's not finished with trick williams um overall pretty good show from top to bottom i'm not gonna say it was the best nxt show in a while but you know i mean it, it was what it was I, i'm sure it's going to lead to more development later on but yeah we'll see we'll see what happens yes all right now to I, now I, to I, I, I did mine so uh go ahead and... i just i don't know if you had anything else to add to it no um, sir we're now to smackdown and we open up with the the champion yet again because we can't get enough of him on tv because we can't keep we can't stop promoting him paid him too much money to leave the other company um but then we have Cody Rose, but this one's a little bit short of a promo. He comes out and announces that um, they're going to have a <laughs> tournament, which really wasn't a tournament. It was two matches. Um, yeah. But we have two triple threat matches, um, six challengers. We had Bobby Lashley, um, LA Knight, LA Knight and, and Santos Escobar. Escobar. I was trying to remember who the other person was. I was like, who's the heel in the match? But it was Santos Escobar on one side. And then we have... Uh, on the other side, it was AJ Styles, Rey Mysterio, and Kevin Owens. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, excuse me. But the opening match of the night was the right way to start it out. You had Bobby Lashley, LA Knight, Central Escobar, and a really good triple threat match. Um, the thing is, all three of these guys are really hot. The crowd was in favor for all three of them, um, even mm -hmm. for Santo Escobar. Um, he got to showcase that he can hang with main event level guys. Yes. Um, which I already knew, but obviously, you know, they've built him up from NXT's cruiserweight division up to Midland Mexican gang warfare up to <laughs> <the> actual. <laughs> am I wrong? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not saying you're wrong, but I am saying it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, Santos Escobar showed a lot during his match uh, against Lashley and LA Knight. Um, but at the end of the day, everybody knows, everybody say it, spell it out. The winner was L.A. Knight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, and a really good finish, actually, overall. Um, Central Escobar um, playing possum in the corner to get Bobby Lashley out by having him ram himself into the turnbuckle, um, yeah. being distracted for a second uh, when um, Angel and Umberto, because I know they've changed his name 45 times, also oh, no. just... I'm surprised they haven't changed it, but no, it's still Angel Garza and Roberto Rio. No, it's it's just Angel and Humberto. oh, just Angel and Roberto. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> like I'm saying, they they randomly dropped names here and there. I was like, man, they like, dropped a name. Okay, okay. Um, but um, still the same people though. Just same people, yeah. Um, uh, but no, they they come out and obviously have to have um the other members of Pride, aka the Street Profits, come out, have a big distraction, a big blue ha ha, you know, showing off. That's um, gonna be your next feud. The Pride I'm, versus Legato de Fantasma, which I'm fine with it. Yeah, but do the same way they did with the Final Testament. Don't have the women get involved because neither one of them can work. <laughs> um, uh, BFAB cannot work whatsoever. No, um, no, no. Car uh, Carmen, uh, wow. Electra Lopez sort of can, but she's still sort of green. Um, yeah. I'm here and there. Yeah. Um, but no, overall, really good match. Like I said, showed that Escobar can hang out with the big boys. It's keeping the momentum for LA Knight, still keeping him up there in the top. And yep. I mean, Bobby Lashley you can't do anything to hurt him. Um, no. His reputation or anything. He's loved by everybody. He's put in the years. He's always going to put in a good match regardless. Right. Um, hey, before we move on to the next one, let me just ask a quick question out here. And it's not, and I'm not looking for a debate. I just want just a genuine, honest answer here. Do debate, you, debate. <laughs> do either one? Do either one of you guys see Bobby Lashley winning the WWE Championship or the World Heavyweight Championship again in the WWE? Uh, I can see it. I see it. I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, it whether has... it happens or not, I don't know, but I can yeah. definitely see him being the champion again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, he's just he's just too good to not have near the title every even when you bring him down a little bit to the i'm not even gonna say that mid card the the the, the middle, lower main event the lower main event yeah I, oh there's not really a name for that because it's not mid card but you're not in the main event so it's all, it's almost like there's like nine different levels it's yeah. like you got the bottom of the it's like you got the bottom of the jobbers like like there's jobber, 
there's jobber, curtain jerker, and then like top of the bottom. And then your mid card is like lower mid, 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 high mid. And then it's like your low main event guys, your main event guys, and your champion pretty much. But you also forgot your tag team. Well, I'm just talking about just for single competitors. I'm not even okay. talking about tag teams at this point. I'm just talking about just the singles competitors. But even uh, in, I mean, even some of the singles, even some of the tag teams have individual guys who you could probably put in that same category as well if they yeah, ever split yeah. up. You know? Main event, Jey Uso. <laughs> My man, there you go. Um, but no, uh, from there we actually go on to probably the best moment of the week. Yes. Uh, um, we get onto a segment to find out what is next for the head of the table and the bloodline. Um, Paul Heyman's out there talking. Um, he's go pretty much because of. Well, hold on, of hold on. Before we get to that, let's talk about the backstage segment that happens with the bloodline. Yeah, because it 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 directly impacts what happens in the ring. Wait, which one? Where they're okay. walking. Go, gotcha. They're walking in uh, to go to their dressing room. It's, oh, it's Paul yeah. Solo and Jimmy. And the dressing room has Cody's Cody name rolled, on it. yeah. I forgot about that garbage. Um, uh well, but it directly impacts the the in ring yeah, segment. Yeah. Um so Kevin Owens walks in and is like, Oh, hey, there's like a broom closet over there, uh, kind of deal. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. and Solo's like, I'll take care of this. And Paul stops him and is like, Hey, look, you know. There, there are consequences to to winning and losing, and and the tribal chief has said that we're going to take this loss, you know, and and work our way back up. So if we want our uh, dressing room back, we've got to earn it. So yeah. then it goes to where you were going. So yeah, uh, we get to the ring. Um, and Heyman cuts a sort of babyface promo by saying. That there are, like you said, there were consequences for winning and losing. They're going to take it on the chin and just build it back up. Um, no excuses. Cody Rose won fair and square. Yeah. Not really, though. Okay. But yeah. Well, uh, well, I like the fact, I don't mean to cut you off, but I like the fact how they did the ultimate callback to the Shield breaking up with Seth, like, you know, just beating the shit out of Roman with the chair. And then 10 years later, they used that moment of, Roman was so was still holding that anger and still holding that grudge against Seth that in a moment of weakness he took his revenge out 10 years after the fact and because he did that it led Cody to you know do that whole thing so storytelling wise I understand but at the in the end it was like you could have done it a different way I think but you know I understand why they did it the way that they did it but I I don't know I feel I feel like it could have been it could have been done a different way, which you could have still done the same thing. I don't know. But anyway, go ahead and continue. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, Heyman points out that Roman Reigns had a lack of judgment and took revenge. Lack of judgment, on, yeah. That's what I was trying to say. Took revenge on Seth um instead of finishing off Cody Rose when he had the opportunity. And Cody Rose took advantage of it, as anybody should, and got the win. Um and then from that moment on, um, we sort of the camera sort of pans out a little bit and shows Solo sort of staring at Paul Heyman and Paul Heyman is like, uh, uh, "Yep, got something to say." And then Solo Sequoia says, um, "Well, somebody has to pay for this." And Jimmy's laughing like, "Yeah, hi, hi, hi." And then Solo like looks at Jimmy and he's like, "Uh, what? I'm your brother. What are you doing? This ain't going down this way." Um, mm -hmm. and then he hugged him. He hugged him. Said, "I love you. You're my brother." Then he Simone spikes him. No, no, no. He turns around. We think he's gonna spike him, but then when he turns around, oh, yeah, and he then does, uh, the yeah. Hold. yeah, yep, I forgot. Um, and then slotted in is the newest member of the new bloodline. Yep. Yeah. Um, and it is the the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Tomatonga himself, 
Um, looking like his daddy ready to kill somebody. Yeah. <laughs> this man is so dieseled out for no reason at all. No, there's a uh, reason for it. He's the new enforcer, apparently. Yes. Like, damn, why are you so mean... big? <laughs> like, um, but no, he, he cut his hair, um, which really threw me off because I was expecting the long hair, the, the frilly hair and everything, but I mean, the clean cut look looks good on him. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, uh, the segment was kind of weird because people expected Jay to come out and make the save, but never did. Um, Nobody made the save. Yeah. No, even Cody didn't come out to make the save. But I mean, yeah, why would he be getting involved in this anyway? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, and it's Jimmy. I mean, because Jimmy turned his back on uh, Jay. Jimmy was the one that was kind of he basically snuck his way back in back kind of backdoored his way back into the bloodline in, in, essentially. So yeah, so it makes sense that no one comes to help him, you know. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna see how where this continues on to. Really good segment. Um, there was another part of the segment where it was later on in the night. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that part. I'm talking about during that same segment when uh, Paul had the phone in his hand because he always says, "You know, oh, call yeah. Roman Reigns." And Solo took the phone, threw it on, threw it in the ring, and just. Stomp the shit him. out of it, you know, and then the wickedest hip, you know, hip slam straight into the yeah. So with, Jay, Tama, with Jimmy in the corner, and then Tama puts the chair in front of him, and then he does that running uh, uh hip. I don't even know what what do you call that? Just a hip tackle? I mean, I don't. So Solo Sequoia does the Umaga hip rush in the corner. Hip rush. Okay, there you go. And hits the chair. Actually, hits the chair for real. Um, that's actually around Jay's head and neck. Yeah. Um, so maybe Jay or not Jay, but Jimmy. Maybe Jimmy still get a couple weeks off. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, so go to commercial break. Come back to commercial break, and we have um, a Braun Breaker match where he squashes Cameron Grimes, mm-hmm. who people keep forgetting is on SmackDown because he was drafted last year and has literally done nothing but job out. Um, yep. So there's that. Just a quick squash match. Braun obviously winning. Um, but from there, we go to a promo or. A vignette, sorry, a pre vignette, a pre recording of Logan Paul. And Logan Paul does a quick one minute uh, TikTok pretty much and says that um, this is going to be the Logan Paul Levesque era. Not yeah. the Paul, not the Paul Levesque era, but the Logan Paul Levesque era. Um, to get more heat, obviously. Um, I think from there we go to another commercial break. We come back and Bailey's doing her celebration. But she's interrupted by T- Tiffany Stratton. Um, Tiffany tries to challenge Bailey. And Naomi, why was Naomi out there? I can't even remember. Well, because Bailey wanted to, Tiffany came out because she thought Bailey was doing an open challenge. And uh, Bailey was like, no, 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 I wasn't really going to do an open challenge. She was, she was I was going to challenge Naomi. That's right. I can't uh, like I can't remember why we got Naomi out there, but yeah. But Naomi and Tiffany Stratton, uh, Stratton have a, a match for a future title match. Yeah, which, well, I can't they call it number contender shot. Um, and I don't know anything. You use that wordage, uh, verbiage. I mean, but Naomi beat Tiffany Stratton, which I was actually surprised by. I was uh, too. Yeah, me too. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, yeah. Um, and from there we have, um, what, are they Car- calling, what are they calling themselves? Um, well, re- well, they've been calling themselves the big three. We're talking about Naomi, Bianca, yeah, and Jay. Yeah, the big so, three. Yeah. Or two thirds of the big three. Yeah. So we have, uh, Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair versus, uh, Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. Um, I mean, it wasn't a squash match per se, but oh, bless me. Bless you. We pretty much knew already that it's just to show Jade and Bianca Belair off again. Um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, but no, it easy match for Jade and Bianca. From there, we go to the main event of the night, which was the triple threat between AJ, Kevin Owens, Rey Mysterio. Really good match. Um, also, as well, what do you what you expect from these guys? Um, but I'm trying to think about the big moments. Um, K- 
Kevin Owens did uh, the Cannonball to the Barricade on AJ Styles. Yep. Rey Mysterio hit his 619 on Kevin Owens. Blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Um, um, we get to a bunch of other spots here, but the big finish I actually enjoyed. It was surprising to me. Um, Kevin Owens had gone up to the top rope to try to suplex or superplex AJ Styles. AJ Styles fights him off. Boom, boom, boom. Kevin Owens falls down. It's planted there. Wake away for something. Then Rey Mysterio tries to get up there. And then he gets beat down, and AJ puts him in a style slash, lands on Kevin Owens, yep, but holds on to the style clash, rolls over and pins Rey Mysterio. Yes. Um, so we're getting the rematch of AJ Styles and Ellie Knight. Technically should go to AJ Styles to have the one one with Ellie Knight, but also to have a heel go against Cody as his first title offense. Um yeah. and Ellie Knight can still do something to sort of cause a loss for AJ Styles or have a reason to have the, the rubber match between AJ Styles to get that third one in there, um, continue Which, to do a feud. If if they do it, I would say that that, that rubber match uh, essentially will probably be at uh, Rihad, Saudi Arabia. Is that before Money in the Bank? Yeah. Okay. Uh well so the next the next event is Backlash. Yeah. Uh yeah. which is where Cody will defend the the title against the winner of that match. Yeah. And then um you'll have the Saudi Arabia show which is going to be so they're going to do a two night event in Saudi. They're going the first, first time ever it'll be SmackDown and then the next night will be King slash Queen of the Ring. Yeah. And I won't and, watch either pay per view because I don't support those blood money shows. Yeah. Uh, and then the next event after that uh, is not Money in the Bank. Actually, it's actually Clash at the Castle in Glasgow, yeah. Scotland. Uh, and then that's in June. And June, then Money yep. in the Bank is July sixth. Right. And then SummerSlam, as we know, SummerSlam is August third in Cleveland. And then August, so September would be. Uh, Bash in Berlin. Yeah, that's and, August thirty first, and then if I'm not mistaken, I think they're doing one more event, and then Survivor Series is in October. It doesn't say chronologically what the next event after SummerSlam is yet, but I'm gonna assume it's uh, yeah, because NXT is also doing their shows as well. They're doing uh. Yeah, because they just did stand and deliver their next big NXT's next big like uh, uh, Peacock exclusive event is going to be Battleground. That's May 26th, and then Heat Wave on July 7th. That's going to be in Toronto. Uh, but yeah, all in all, I thought SmackDown was uh, a, a really good show. Uh, I, I honestly felt like SmackDown was a better show than Raw was. It always Which, is. Sorry, sorry. Well, that's, a bi that's bias in me. I'm sorry. Typically, the Raw after Mania is probably the best Raw of the year. Um, I'll give you that. Yes, typically. Uh, but but this this SmackDown really set the the bar for for what we can expect moving forward. Uh, and and we're getting more layers to the bloodline uh story uh i'm i'm hooked I, I i'm ready to see where this goes um we kind of talked about it a little bit this weekend uh while we were in huntsville uh but yeah i am I'm, I'm really interested to see where where this goes I I feel like it's gonna come to another bloodline civil war like the like like what happened uh, last year. Um, only the the players there might be some returning players. There might be some different players. You never know. Uh, again, more people have been signed. Obviously, Tama Tonga, um, you know, made his debut on SmackDown. Uh, WWE has also signed uh, 
Jacob Fatu. So he has, could be. Has implemented. that been confirmed? Yes. Yes, yes that okay. has been confirmed. Yes. Yeah. Because um, the last I seen it, it was just a a rumor that he had been signed, but not a hundred percent confirmed. No, they really, confirmed it. He's already confirmed it. And he's already canceled his Indian uh, schedule. Okay. Yeah. Also, um, on the not on the same note, but also kind of an unrelated note, um, Eric Rowan uh, was supposed to have do a do a, do a show. He canceled like two weeks in a row. Like uh, he like canceled like the remainder of his independent bookings due to contractual obligations, and they believe many people believe that that is due to the uh, the. And we talked about it a little bit also this weekend of the uh, the creation of what Bray Wyatt was originally going to do before his uh, untimely passing was bringing about the Wyatt Six, which consisted of which at the time was going to consist of him, uh, Bo Dallas, Alexa Bliss, uh, uh, shit, Eric Rowan. Braun Strowman and they were going to throw Joe Gacy in that mix as well. Uh, the Joe Gacy thing, I'm not 100 percent sure if that if he was actually slated to do that. Um, but apparently now we, you've been seeing a lot of these weird. You saw them a little bit on Raw. You saw it on SmackDown. Um, of people of all these weird, you know, cryptic like weird digital kind of like analog kind of responses to like the television screens and stuff like that with like secret hidden messages and stuff. I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm um, interesting if they are going to continue or do something as a tribute to Bray Wyatt. I do want to see where it kind of goes, you know, just to see like did, what's going to happen. Did they do something later. like that on Raw and SmackDown last week? They did it they're, on. They had a little glitches and stuff. Yeah, the okay. glitches. Thank you. That's that's the word I was trying to think of. Yeah, they did little glitches, and then at at one point, I think it was during the, uh, it was during the Bianca Belair. Uh, yeah, was doing that tag match. In the there was a little mess in the corner that said, "You forgot about us." And uh, no, yeah, that's what the if the, the it, it it said you it said you forgot about us. That's what the little thing at the bottom of the screen said. I mean, I could sh I could send you the screenshot, but yeah, but that's what the uh, the thing like. There was a couple of messages. There was one that was like "hello," but the word "hell" was more broadly highlighted than the "o" was, and. Yeah, and apparently WWE's official uh, X account got hacked with a whole bunch of different cryptic messages that was later deleted, but people saved the screenshots of them. And yeah, so I'm interested to see if that's going to go anywhere as well. Um, but overall, I thought SmackDown was a good show. I think both triple threat matches were really, really good. Um, obviously, you know, the horse with the whole thing with LA Knight and AJ Styles. Uh, looking forward to the looking forward to the second match. I mean, I I, I do believe we're going to eventually going to get a third match out of them eventually for that rubber match. Uh, I think it, overall, I thought it was a really good show. What about you, uh, Raj? Um, it, I mean, I really liked SmackDown uh, mainly the fact that to refresh the. Bloodline story. Um, I'm always up for more uh, AJ versus LA Knight. I mean, it was a good show overall. Better, definitely better than Raw. Um, overall, they they were able to keep the flow natural for the most part. Well, um, it was all right. I like it. I thought it was a good show. Probably like I said the best one of the week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it was definitely best one of the week. Absolutely. Uh, do we want to touch on the uh, AEW slash New Japan Pro Wrestling stuff nope, nope, that happened? We, we we only discuss actual wrestling. <laughs> we don't do we don't discuss backyard garbage that gets high production value. <laughs> so so New Japan Pro Wrestling is now has been demoted down after what they just <laughs> did yesterday. Been demoted down. Yeah, it's literally like in, in ranking. It's like now WWE. TNA, MLW, and then New Japan. Now at this point, yeah, it is it's fallen so hard just for that stupid two, for the few decisions they have decided to make over the weekend. They have decided to shoot themselves in the foot, um, and kill themselves. Uh, and, and one more thing, I'm just going to touch on it sparingly because I know y'all don't want me to get into a whole deep dive of it, but I'm just going to say this: Tony Khan releasing the All Out footage didn't do a damn thing to help them. It was the stupidest way to try to garner extra ratings because, fuck it. CM Punk already told you what happened. 
And then you play the video like it's somehow going to deter people from believing. Here's the thing. There was a video footage of people that were in the audience. The, the, the little to how many they were doesn't matter. They they showed the video up on the screen and the crowd was chill, still chanting CM Punk. So you mean to tell me that the guy that you fired back in whenever the hell Brawl Out was, what was it, October or something like that? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It was uh, May. May or June, one of the two. And this guy's still over in a company he's not even involved with anymore. He's with the other company that apparently you hate and you want to wish death upon. And the video didn't do a damn thing, but prove that you didn't need to. And then they played it off like, oh, well, this is this is the reason why the Young Bucks didn't win the tag team titles that night because they were too worried about their friend Jack Perry. And it's like, what? And I'm like, man... But as long as they're making money, they're still on the air, right? Yep. Ridiculous. All right. Well, let's uh, let's let's transition from um, wrestling to uh, our weekend. Uh, we we spent the weekend in Huntsville, Alabama, at the Huntsville Pop Culture or Comic and Pop Culture Expo. Uh had a, a a great time um enjoyed the show thoroughly uh got to meet some some really cool people um talon was introduced to thalians um roy <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> um but i mean all, all in all uh we we unfortunately we missed uh it was a 3 day event we missed the the friday of the event so so day one um because roger and talon both had to work um you know so uh, unfortunately we did miss that but we got down there uh saturday morning um and and pretty much went straight to work um you know getting footage taking pictures all in all uh I thought day one was was a decent day. We made a lot of connections. Uh, got invited to some other events that are happening in the Alabama area. So uh, you know, there there yeah. was that. What would uh, what 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 were you guys' uh, thoughts on uh, day one uh, or? I guess day two, our first day of <laughs> the Huntsville Comic <laughs> and Pop Culture Expo. Go ahead, Raj. I'll let you go. Okay. Um, yeah, I had a good time. Um, yeah, but like like what Chip said, we got there and immediately, bam, went to work. Um, I probably didn't sit down or take a break for like three hours. Like I, I was constantly going, you know, trying to. And at, the, at that point, it's like, hey, I've already taken enough pictures of people, but it's like I keep on running into the same people. Where's some new people? And then they, then it got so condensed and so crowded I, I, one of the guys like, man, it's asshole elbow in here. I can't barely move. And literally, um, from all the celebrities that were there, uh, Steve Burns from uh, Blues Clues had the longest line. Saturday and Sunday, he had the longest line. I think I don't I don't remember his line ever being short. They they were actually like taking people into like the little back the little back not backstage area but like this little it's like this little room off to the side it was almost like you know like a uh damn, how do i describe it it was like the they're hallway. here to see, it, no 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 I'm not, I'm not talking about that i'm talking about what they're called it's like uh fuck it was just an extra place for people to, to uh see him after this line had died down basically um and yeah so his line was constant 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 um me, you know, seen a lot of good, you know, met a lot of cool people, seen some old friends. Um, it was a really, really fun day. Uh, once again, the cosplays were really, really awesome. Um, you know, the, uh, the, who was it? The Robotnik costume was really cool that I seen. Uh, yeah, and just everybody just, you know, had a great time. You know, it was fun. Um, so yeah, I thought day one was really, really good. What about you, Raj? I really enjoyed it. Um, definitely met a lot of cool people. Um, just in general, the network was really fun. Um, I was getting to do, meet some of the celebrities when we got a chance to here and there. Um, 
I unfortunately forgot to take my uh, full metal book. So I couldn't get that signed by Aaron Dismuk. Um, yep. So there was on me for being a failure on that one. <laughs> uh, but maybe a, maybe another day, another try. Um, but no, um, great lineup, great crowd. It was super packed, super busy. Um, I don't think they've announced the numbers yet for the weekend, have they? No, yeah. not yet. Um, I'd have to make probably what twenty five to thirty thousand. Uh, easy. Yeah. Easy. I'm just talking about Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, easy. Uh, easy. Um, but no, it was it was great. Um, really loved that. It was a, a good eclectic mix of not only just different fandoms, but different eras of fandom mm -hmm. um, in general. Because um, obviously you have your 80s stuff, your 90s stuff, then your more recent stuff as well, too. Um, just from the guests in general. But um, we also saw our favorite booth of all time, the Fudge People. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I love the fun people so much. Yeah. Uh, I, had, I, I had to go. I had to go. I had to go give me some Cookie Monster. I, had to go get some I, I bought a quarter pound of it. Yeah. <laughs> and ate it so quickly. Yes, um, but no, overall, it was a great time. We spent hours just walking around, um, talking and shuffling around with the sea current of all these people. Um, Got like you guys said, we got to see some of our old friends, uh, make some new ones, thankfully, and got invited to a few things. And there's some things that we were told to look into, so we got to go and do that too, as well. Yes, um, but no, night one or day one was pretty good. Um, and then I took these two boys to the first Korean barbecue. <laughs> um, and not only did we eat a lot, we ate, we got more than we could handle. Yeah, way more, way, way, way more. more. <laughs> uh, the amount of food that they bring out uh, for 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 the price <laughs> that you pay. Yeah, I mean, it's enough. One one entree is it's for two more people. than enough to feed two people. Um, oh, my God. And it man, it was so good. I've uh, never had I've never had Kimichi before. Like Gimchi. I've never had Gimchi, Gimichi, whatever the fuck it's called. Again, I don't speak Korean, so I don't know. I don't um, speak Korean either. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, excuse me, I'm not as cultured as you, sir. Anyway. <laughs> you ate it. <laughs> anyway, but no, the 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 radish uh, kimchi was really really good. I really thought that was good. The glass noodles were very good as well. Uh, the cucumber. Uh, excuse me, I still hate the flavor of cucumber. I'm sorry. Um, the, uh, the chick, uh, the, uh, what's it called? The fish, uh, fish cakes, what they called? Yeah. They were called fish cakes. Fish cakes. Yeah. The fish cakes were really good too. And then you mix it in with all the stuff. They got the carrots and they got the rice and they got, you know, the, uh, the beef, uh, the beef uh, in there. It was really, really good. The fried egg that was on top of it. It was really, really good. Um, I went, I, I, I man, I, I never, I got the itis that night. So um, we went back to the Airbnb and I was just like, I'm, going to the i'm going to the room i'm going to sleep but yeah, yeah uh, that was fun then uh yeah after we ate we went back to the airbnb uh i mean it was such a nice spot to to just kind of chill out uh and everything you know it so much so much nicer than like a hotel room uh or, or or uh what i normally do is just sleeping in my car in the walmart parking lot um so not, not I, this guy <laughs> so i appreciate roger uh you know talking me into <laughs> to staying at the airbnb the uh the bed was nice although we had some tomfoolery happen uh apparently after we all went to bed some paranormal activity apparently uh mm. talon talon was sleepwalking into the bathroom and don't not me it not me no nah, dude my door was locked i ain't tell no you know i shut my door i put it on uh i put it on uh peacock i fell asleep with some wrestling that was it I, I, I as soon as i walked into that room which was a cool crispy 59 degrees it was really really comfortable um, I know some people are like the 59 degrees is comfortable. Yes, 59 degrees is comfortable to me. 
I live in an igloo if I could. But yeah, I mean, it was really, really comfortable. Them, the, I, my bed was the only bed that didn't have a pillow top on it, but it was fine because the blankets, you know, was was comfortable. I want them blankets. Like I was seriously thinking of asking Roger, hey, text that lady, see how much them blankets cost. You nope. know, <laughs> there was there was no no. I did ask Roger, and I'm still nope. mad at him <laughs> for, for not asking the lady where she got <clears throat> the blankets from uh because the the blankets and pillows were super comfortable yes uh again you know very very nice house uh to stay in so if you're ever in the the huntsville area definitely um check out the calming corner uh, is what it's called uh it, it was very calming very nice very accommodating um but so then from from there you know we wake up on sunday and uh, we scoot back over to the Von Braun Center. Uh, for... uh, sir, you, you forgot our, bur- our breakfast. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We stopped at uh, Duncan. Duncan. Man, and we to all... get breakfast. After Roger took us 20 minutes out of the way, because his GPS, he literally puts into the GPS the, for the closest Duncan Donuts. Um. And it took us 20 minutes out of the way to a place that did not exist. Yeah. I it, it, was, it was probably inside the building, but we weren't. That, like, that's what I was know. thinking. Yeah, it was inside the building. Because it was like, not like a college campus or anything, but it looked like it was like a building with like different, I, I guess a shopping center or something. I don't know what it was. But I was like, yeah, you went you, you went the wrong direction. <laughs> but yeah, so we uh, we going back, got some Dunkin', some uh, bacon, egg, and cheese bagels, which Roger had the turkey sausage. Chip had the breakfast empanadas. Uh... Then we got to the building and just went right back to work. Well, Jim and I had to do some early morning business before we started the business. Yeah, <laughs> thanks to had, old uh... Duncan. <laughs> yeah, well, Ooh. we had we had our own coffee brewing. <laughs> yeah. I, yes. I, I I just grabbed the camera and went because literally the line because uh, we got there uh, around what seven thirty ish. No, maybe a little bit no. later. Well, what? No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We got there at like nine thirty. 930 ish yeah. anyway so so we get there at like 9 30 ish the vips uh got in around 10 30 and they, then the doors open at 11 so i figured i would take some pictures in the hallway i didn't realize this at the time because i was like okay because you know because i've seen longer lines than this the line literally was from where the entrance way is all the way out to the door that we came through that morning excuse me and there was people outside that so i was just like i think i'm gonna wait to get everybody as they come through but yeah but yeah definitely um sunday was a it was sunday i guess was a little bit busier for me taking pictures wise because yeah there was less people there but i felt like i could move around a little bit more and there was room to actually take more pictures i guess um especially like in the actual vendor hall and on celebro and and and, and uh in places like that, but it's got it's, it's a little bit open. Which, but the only thing I don't really like about taking pictures in the hallways is that sometimes, depending on what time of day you take the picture, and the sunlight enters in, and it kind of distorts the picture. So I'm like, can we do this again? Can we like scoot over out of the way of the, of the sunlight, you know, so we can get a good picture? Because because again, I hate taking bad pictures and showing people like, hey, do you like this picture? No, fuck. Okay, let me start over. You know, so that's one of the one of my I guess pet peeves or pet peeves wouldn't even be the word for it yeah it's a pet peeve that i have been taking pictures you know like i don't want i don't want anybody to be like oh that picture sucks you know what i mean so yeah yeah but yeah but go ahead chip uh no 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 i, I was just agreeing with you okay um but yeah so then um we uh we we talked to some of the uh the celebrity um i i I guess what would you call them? The the handlers or um, yeah, they're, they're agents? The handlers. handlers. No, there's only one agent, and that was uh, your homeboy. Okay. Uh, so so we talked to some of the celebrity handlers, seeing you know who would be uh up to uh, accepting uh media for the day, uh, which is something that we we do quite often. Is you know just check well, to see because hold on you know, real quick. Um, yes. We might want to start a little bit from the beginning because people, some people don't know that certain celebrities bring their own handlers and those oh, that yeah. don't bring their own handlers, the uh, volunteer staff uh, gets assigned a celebrity for the day or the weekend, depending on how 
the con runner wants to do and how the staff gets assigned. So yes. we asked some of the staff who were the handlers, and then we also went up and asked some of the celebrity, actual celebrity handlers. Um, from experience, every time we do this, the staff is more friendly than the actual personal handler. <laughs> Yes. yes, absolutely. Uh, but continue on, Chip. I just want to yes. make sure people understood there's difference because you'll be like, well, why did this guy say yes and this guy said no or this guy said no and, you know, kind of thing because yes, it depends on who the person is. Yeah. And, and it also uh, depends on who the agency is as well. Right. Uh, but yeah, so so we, we went around and, and started asking uh, the handlers and uh, agents um, you know, who, who would be, uh, willing to accept media for the day. Uh, and you know, when we're at conventions, we're, we're only asking for like three to five minutes of, of a person's time. Just, uh, we kind of have like four questions that we, we like to ask all of the, um, the voice actors and actresses, uh, really, you know, it kind of, <clears throat> brings the, the the fans into their mindset uh we've kind of curated curated these four questions um to, to to kind of bring you know the fan into the mindset of the voice uh actor slash actress and and how they do their job uh so it's you know it's a real quick three to five minutes um and you know, we were fortunate enough that that several of the uh, the the guests said that they would be willing to do that as long as their agency said it was okay. Uh, now there were several agencies there this weekend. Uh, you had Celeb Works, you had Primetime Appearances, you had Conventions, etc., uh, and then a couple of more that I apologize I cannot remember off of the top of my head. Um. But so, you know, we went to the, 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 the head of the agency that was there, uh, may not be the, the particular head of the agency overall, but it was the, the head that was there this weekend and said, you know, Hey, we spoke with such and such. And they said, you know, they would be willing to do like a five minute interview as long as you're okay with that. And, um, you know, Thankfully, we were we were granted a, a few interviews. Um, uh, you know, those those will be coming out um, probably next week. Um, I would say, uh, but they were really good, very insightful um, interviews. I uh, don't want to really release who or should we? No, who who would be coming next week? Okay, no. Um, but I think you guys will enjoy them. Uh, but yeah, uh, and, and then, um, uh, you know, so we, we, we did that. We got some time frames set out to when we were going to do interviews throughout the day. Uh, then we kind of, um, wandered the, uh, the vendor hall, uh, taking pictures, doing some B-roll, uh, kind of thing. And, uh bumped into oh what was that guy's name the gentleman uh with the books roger uh you you got the card not me <laughs> no uh, he, he didn't he didn't give us a business card um i don't remember he handed you a card at the end because it was right next to that book before i pointed out the possum that's that's right i don't have it with me <laughs> uh but he, oh, uh, man uh, i i Man, I, I I'm so sorry. I cannot remember your name. It's it's been... the only reason the only reason we even spoke to that guy is because we were walking around and I was like, oh hey, he's got a battle vest just like us. Yes, and I uh, pointed at him and he looked at me and he pointed back. So we're like, oh, he was he was the guy. he was the one that had all the pins on his battle vest. Correct? Is that the guy you're talking uh, about? The bigger dude. He's kind of bald headed. Got like a lightish brownish beard. Is that the guy you're talking about? Maybe. <laughs> well, he was a vendor, not just somebody. Yeah. That that's what I'm talking. Around. Yeah, he was a vendor. That's what. That's the guy that I'm talking about. He had a yeah. battle vest on. That's why I was thought. I know who you're. I know who you're talking about. God, he told me his name too because I seen him because he talked. He uh, talked about my battle I feel vest. Like, I feel like Robert, but I feel like that's wrong. That's wrong. It, it, 
or is it? Yeah, but uh, anyway, we'll figure he, it out and we'll let him. We'll, we'll, we'll shout him out later. <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, but he he's from the Atlanta area. He uh, also does a podcast. He's an author. Uh, he, you know, is is a vendor at a ton of conventions. Uh, super nice guy. Very insightful. Uh, told us about a couple of conventions that uh, we should uh, try to get on and attend. Um, so definitely going to look into that. Uh, got to see uh, some of our old friends. Uh, Brian Silverbacks uh, was there with um, all of his uh, paintings and comic book covers. Uh, Jason Flowers yes. uh, was there. Yeah. Um Shout out to you, Brian, by the way. My wife loved it. I, mean, I do appreciate you doing that for me, my brother. I appreciate it. Sorry, I had, I had to jump in there and say that. Go ahead, Chip. Um, so then, you know, Jason Flowers was there. Uh, if you haven't yet, go check out uh, his Facebook, Instagram, website. Uh, he just released a, uh, a variant cover to issue one of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin 2. Uh uh, he also just uh, just released the uh, variant cover for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue 150, uh, which if you're not keeping up with that series uh, I and you're a Ninja Turtles fan, I do not know what you are doing. That series has been incredible from issue one until issue 149. Issue 150 has not released yet. That is uh, in two weeks. But um, then uh, hooked up with uh, my boy Deegan. Uh, Deegan also yes. done a uh, a variant cover for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: The Last Ronin Two, Issue One. Um, I went ahead and picked that up. Uh, I already had Jason's, uh, so I picked up Deegan's as well. Uh, and he was working on a very nice uh, commission uh this weekend uh unfortunately i didn't get to see the finished product talent and roger did uh it was a, a green goblin spider-man yeah uh, thing that, yeah uh, it was it was nice dude it was, it was very it was, very it was nice. so beautiful and um always was his great sense of art style and everything he used some black um light ink on some of the features yeah Not beautiful the smoke coming out of the lantern it's i'm sorry of the jack-o-lantern itself that was highlighted with the black light pen and dude it made it pop even more so i was like that is one of the coolest covers i think i've seen since we started working and doing conventions like that's one of the coolest ones i've seen so far uh yeah so um Definitely, uh, Deegan actually uh, showed some interest to uh, wanting to come on the podcast. We're going to reach out to him uh, here very shortly. We'll get him on the podcast to talk about all the upcoming um, art that he he will be uh, putting out. So there is that. Um, yes. But uh, uh, again, all in all, day two was really really um great i uh picked up a really cool piece of art um on a uh, foam board it was of the almost the first sighting of vegeta in dragon ball z uh where he has the um the scouter uh lens on uh it's it's the the famous outfit that he's wearing when he you hear uh, him shout, it's over 9,000. Um, so I picked that up and then was fortunate enough to get the OG voice of Vegeta from the uh, the Ocean dub before Funimation took over. Um, Brian, uh, no, I'm not, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're Brian, right. Uh, well, I, I, for, for whatever reason, I get him and Brad mixed up sometimes but it is it's brian uh drummond yes uh he's yeah the, yeah brad's the voice of gohan and yeah brian's the voice of vegeta so uh I, I was fortunate enough to get uh brian to to sign that particular piece of art for me 
um and and now i i have one one more signature to get on that piece of art uh and hopefully i will meet uh chris sabat very soon at a convention and get him to also sign that piece of art um and then it will be displayed on this wall for all of the world to see so yes Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, I, what did you guys uh, think of of Sunday, the the last day of uh, Huntsville Comic and Pop Culture Expo? I had a really good time. Uh, like what we said, you know, we got to ha- got to hung out with uh, Deegan for a little bit. You know, he's always cool to be on. Plus, he's a wrestling fan, so when he comes on, we have more to discuss other than just his artwork and stuff. Because he said he wanted to talk wrestling with us, and we actually, I actually first met Deegan at Cartersville Comic Con. Uh, last year uh when we is when i first met him and then we we was talking wrestling back then uh also always good to see brian always good to see jason flowers um i want to give a quick shout out though i know i put it up i'm gonna take it down if i can get this motherfucker off here we go want to give a shit special shout out to my boy uh cubster and his partner jerry uh, a couple of months ago they went to uh, a concert to see gemini syndrome and infected rain and uh they hey i don't mean to cut you off but uh you're not the getting lights as good right yeah yeah you might want right. to not put that right in front of the there does you that go look, does that look better this way there we go uh, all right so somewhat somewhat okay here I'll, there we go that, that works if I, if, we, if I leave it here the light from there and the light from the screen won't mess it up but yeah um they got two of these and they knew that i was a fan of the band gemini syndrome so the guys from gemini syndrome went on ahead and autographed it for me and it says to talon and they've had this since like january or december or january and they said that they were going to bring it to me the next time that they see me and of course they missed it when 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 we saw them at uh conuga back in uh, march but they were able to get it to me this time so again eli jerry i love you guys thank you for this i'd really deeply appreciate it um and also like what i said a minute ago to brian silverbacks the uh, the artwork uh, that he made for my wife um it's actually in the other room and i don't feel like running over there to get it uh but he did a watercolor painting for my wife uh for mother's day for uh it was a uh, it was orange uh frogs with some watercolors and stuff in it um so i definitely do appreciate that those are the only two things that i got um i didn't really have the extra money to spend because i had to pay brian and i had to pay for the pay my part of the airbnb so i didn't really have that much uh, uh, money otherwise to just you know get random stuff um, but yeah, but it was cool. I got to meet, you know, I got to, I got to, uh, hang out and talk to, uh, David McCormick of Bluey, uh, who plays Bandit on Bluey. Uh, I actually got a chance to watch, uh, the episode The Sign today with my kids. And, uh, I'm not going to spoil anything for the people who haven't seen it, but, uh, it's a really good episode. Probably the longest episode they did. It's like 29 minutes, but anyway, but yeah, hanging out with him, getting to meet him was pretty cool. Um, I got to meet Trish Stratus. Uh, which was which the 13 year old kid in me is screaming his head off but yeah I, I mustered up the courage to talk to her and we only we talked for a few minutes and stuff and uh i'm not going to divulge too much of the conversation because i asked her about certain wrestling things and now we've discussed those certain wrestling things and now maybe some of them wrestling things that we talked about might be in danger considering what happened on raw tonight um but yeah she was really cool to talk to um uh like what we said brad and brian from uh you know, Vegeta and Gohan, both of them were great guys to talk to. Uh, Marty Ghost, I, I always, I always f up his f, f up his last name. Uh, the one that played Courage of Cowboy Dog is is it Goldstein? Is that was that, is that was Marty that Grabstein? Grabstein, Grabstein. I'm sorry. Yeah, that dude is absolutely hilarious. He's a national treasure. That dude's really really fun to talk to. Um, also, Ross Marquand and uh, Kari Payton from. Uh, the Walking Dead, Carl Payton also from Teen Titans Go, The Voice of Cyborg. He was really cool to talk to also. I got to talk to T- Tara Strong for a little bit. She was really nice. Um, didn't get a chance to see uh, Steve Bloom or uh, Steve Burns. I uh, didn't get a chance to talk to either one of them, but they were pretty cool uh, just to see the, their lines. Like literally, I think Steve Bloom, even after the convention was shutting down, I was talking to Roger about this, even after like the convention was over with and people were starting to pack up stuff, he still had people in his line. So I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, he was still, you know, standing there as long as it took to make sure that every fan, you know, got to got to see him and talk to him and, you know, get his autograph or picture or whatever. I thought that was pretty cool as well. Um, but yeah, I, I thought Sunday was great. I got a lot of great pictures. I probably took my favorite picture 
of all the pictures that I've taken. Um, and for most people who know me, they know that I'm a fan of horror, creepy pastas, and stuff like that. I got to take a picture of these uh, two lovely ladies who were dressed up as uh, Laughing Jack. And I've took a couple of Laughing Jack pictures before in the past. In fact, I took another Laughing Jack picture at the same convention last year. Uh, but seeing both of them, it was weird because it was almost like it was like it was like one of them was Laughing Jack, but she had a hue of pink and red mixed in with her outfit. And then the other one was like a blue and a teal mixed in. I, I thought it was really cool. You guys will see the picture. When you can see the picture, you'll understand what I'm talking about beautiful picture uh probably like i said before it's one of my favorite pictures i've ever taken um you know just trying to get better trying to improve this photography thing um overall yeah i really enjoyed sunday i really did it, i thought it was really, really cool what about you roger what'd you uh how'd you feel about sunday um uh, sunday a little bit busier trying to get more stuff down and meet more people overall um to be honest i really care about much of anything besides just moving around and trying to get stuff settled down um, trying to think, what did we? Hey, I'm trying to think. Um, we got to walk. We got there early. Walked around, trying to get some stuff set up. Um, then we walked the vendor floor a little bit more. Got to meet more people. Went out to the hall, talked to some people out there. Then we got some of the interviews set up. Had to wait for those to get done or wait for the time for that to happen. But the in-between stuff is sort of blurred to me. Um, I haven't really processed Sunday yet. Saturday, I have a Sunday all blur for right now. Um, once I go through videos and pictures and stuff like that, it'll probably come to me a little bit more. Uh, but it was really cool that we got to do the, the interviews that we did. Um, they were really, really cool, really informative, really fun. Um, just wait for those to be done um i gotta get those done soon uh but overall it was still a great um great day great event um they used up every single inch of that floor they could possibly use yeah they did um probably gonna need a bigger just use more of a facility use probably the whole entire damn place um yeah. but yeah no it was still it was great overall really enjoyed it um can't wait for next year. They've already announced the dates and everything for the next year, so that's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I will say my biggest pet peeve of the whole weekend was them stupid Damn monster, monster trucks. trucks. I was fixing to say that, yes. I nah, nah. And and I think the reason that, that they aggravated me so much is because I was so busy I couldn't go see them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were loud, man. Like, I mean, I mean, obviously, obviously, it's going to be loud when you're in the actual arena watching them. But even outside, it's like, golly, that is louder than I thought it was going to be. I mean, it echoed throughout the whole, you know, hallway lobby area of the uh, of the of the space that we were in. So I was like, OK, that's pretty loud. OK, that's fine. Um, I had a cringe moment. Um, uh, and if, uh, Roger, if you want to tell that story. <laughs> well, that's your story. It ain't my story. Your... <laughs> it definitely is your story. <laughs> what you mean? Yeah. So a couple of weeks ago, we told. Or was it a couple of weeks ago? Was it last week when when you told the story of the? Uh, uh, this one to be two weeks, I believe. Yeah, at two two weeks ago, Roger told the cringe story about how this guy met a girl at a party, and he thought it was interesting that her skirt had a pocket. Uh, so he walked over to her and said, "Hey, I like your skirt. It looks like you know your skirt's got a pocket." And she looked up her hand and she didn't, she looked up her arm and she didn't have a hand. Yeah, that story happened only, it was just some random dude that was standing there. And I, I didn't know this guy. I didn't, I've never met this man. I didn't talk to him or anything. So this is not in any way, shape or form, like a shot at this guy, or I'm trying to be disrespectful or anything. I literally looked over and I'm just like, oh, okay. This guy's talking because I think it was Roger pointed out. It's like, Hey, look at that guy over there. I'm like, what's wrong? What, what's wrong? I don't see nothing. And then the guy scratched his head with the with the arm that didn't have the hand. I was like, man, I thought his hand was in his pocket. I just turned around and then Roger was just laughing at me. I'm like, ha ha, now you get to feel the cringe, don't you? I'm like, shut up. Yeah, I get to enjoy it. <laughs> bathing it like the water of Lake Minnetonka. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm not even, I'm not even going to get on the Thalian thing. I'm not even going to talk that story. <laughs> but anyway. But anyways... But after yeah. the convention, we also uh, on the on the way back from 
uh, the convention. We're going uh, going back home, and I've never eaten mm. a water burger before, and I don't know if Chip has or not. Um, but we stopped off and got us water burger for the very first time, and I don't know if Chip will agree with or disagree with me on this one, but I should have got a single because that triple cheeseburger was. Yeah, <laughs> I was so sleepy after that one too. But anyway, yeah, the uh, I'd I'd never eaten Whataburger before, and uh, it was it was really good. I I do agree the the triple was a, a bit much. Um, I I was expecting like a, a typical triple. I can put those away, like a Wendy's triple or whatever. Yeah. I can put that away, no problem. But um. You know, huge. uh that one was was not <laughs> that that was not that it for me. I, I I definitely uh went into the the coma <laughs> when I got home. So, yes, you did. Yeah. Yep. What was that? What was the uh uh shit? The fries were also pretty good too. I thought the fries could have been better, but I mean they're not the best fries I've ever had, but they were pretty good. You know. Yep. But anyway, Raj, um, well, you've had Whataburger though before, haven't you? Well, I'll be on. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, I got the spicy chicken. Um, it's definitely spicier than Chick Fil A, but Chick Fil A doesn't know how to season, so it's not surprising. <laughs> Their idea of uh, spice is black pepper. Black pepper, yep. How and much pollen? How much Polynesian sauce does it take to cover up the fact your chicken ain't got no flavor? I don't even like the Polynesian sauce. It tastes like li- just straight grease. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I dip the waffle fries in the in Polynesian sauce. Their that's fries have more seasoning than their chicken. They that's probably why they sell more fries than they do chicken. Um, but, but yes. no, um, I was gonna say, um, from Huntsville, um, I think we what is something that could have been improved? What did we like? And like something we could suggest to. I don't know, round it off or help it out or something like that. Um, not like we're critiquing it and saying Huntsville was trash or anything like that. Obviously, we just reviewed it and said we loved it and everything. So, no, we're not bashing it. Um, everything, obviously, everything can be better, be improved. Um, some things were done greatly. You know, just what are you, like some things that we could do or that could be suggested or recommended or what you thought about the convention and stuff like that in general? Uh- I, I would say in general, uh, I, I think they need to 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 grow uh, and use up more of the Von Braun Center. Um, I, I would say that's probably the the big thing uh, because it's a massive convention, and that's a good thing. Uh, and that's that's a good thing. Uh, so I, I think they they need a little more room uh, moving forward. I would definitely say yes, more room, um, and just be, especially for the Saturday events because I mean, again, like we we were we were packed in there like sardines, man. And sometimes it's like you'd be trying to look at something, and then next thing you know you get bumped, and it's like you know where you you get shifted one way or the other, and it's like you're trying to look at something, you know, which you know. It happens. Um, another thing too, like if you're VIP, like anybody who has like pre-sold tickets or normally like, I'm trying to remember like, cause like there were other people there who had media passes as well. Um, and they had to pick up their tickets where you could get your normal tickets instead of picking them up at will call, which I thought was very interesting, but that's just a little minute thing. It doesn't really matter. Again. I was feeling sorry for the guy who had just kept on screaming and announcing like, why can't you just get a megaphone brother? You know, like it saved your voice so much stress and strain. Um, but yeah, kind of like what chip said, they just they, the Von Braun center is a really, you know, really nice looking arena and center. But if, but I feel like they do need to have some kind of expansion of the of the grounds, you know, to to compensate for all the foot traffic that they're going to have. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Raj? What's your, what's yours? Um, same as always with most conventions at this point. Um, Ranger Stop sort of spoiled me, but you need to have a media room. Like, there should be an opportunity for media to have not really one-on-ones, but 
sort of like a press conference s style um 15 20 minutes with a guest don't take up too much of the time and then people just be able to raise their hands and ask their question and still be able to make content um yeah i know it really depends on the management of the agency and management of the celebrity but i still think it's a great way for that celebrity to sort of see more personable with people especially people who weren't able to go to the convention so they could see a certain side of them and be like oh this person's like this whatever um yeah i mean that's i mean brad hawkins was a chill dude <laughs> we got to meet him that way yes um but no it, like I, I just think that's always something i feel like most conventions could have um just in general um just learn to space out how you set it up i feel like you should give like somebody should do like a panel and then move from the panel and have like their time to go to the booth and stuff maybe a photo op after that and then do booth again and then come to back to the 15 20 minutes of like i said media and then just go and enjoy the rest of the day whatever um that and like you guys said just the expansion more use more space um i don't really like when i know you have to sort of do it that way but i really don't like when conventions do the vendor hall and the celebrities row together i always it's just always way too crowded um if you don't have a convention center that has multiple exhibit halls I understand, but if it does have a secondary exhibit hall, make one just a vendor room and one just a celebrity area. Makes it so much easier to flow through traffic. Yeah, it's it's kind of a weird thing that you bring that up because, like, obviously for when we do when we do conventions at the Chattanooga Convention Center, they have like multiple like areas that are really really wide open. And of course, you have your main vendor hall, but then you have another open area where they have like other events and things of that nature. Now. The, the the complete opposite of that where Chattanooga, the Chattanooga Convention Center has like multiple areas. Atlanta, when we went to um, ATL Comic Con in Atlanta, it was at the World Congress Center. And this place is ginormous. Like there was literally we count, I think we said like well, but I think the final count was like 41,000 people or something over the course of those three days were there. But it didn't feel like we were, you know, being, you know, mashed together that was enough room for everybody to flow you know even around the celebro and even the, the area where the celebrities were in atlanta it wasn't so so confined that everyone was like you know running over each other toppling on top of each other you know so i, I think finding that balance would probably be the best thing for them as they're because i mean huntsville comic and pop poker pop culture expo has grown significantly over the course of the last two years and uh yeah th that's something they're going to have to look into i think definitely expansion is definitely something i think they're going to have to look into yep but yes uh <laughs> that is uh that i believe that is our time for this evening uh thank you guys for joining us tonight whether you stayed for the reddit story the wrestling the convention talk uh just thank you guys for joining us we really do appreciate it we love you guys and before we get out of here guys is there anything you want to say before we bounce um as always please do not leave without leaving a like comment share and subscribe on spotify and right here on youtube what about you roger anything as always thank you guys for the support uh, thank you to all the fans out there um people who want share comment on everything that we're doing um we're growing thanks to you guys and all we can do is keep hoping for the best and we're going to do the best that we can and thank you guys as always um you know just thank you for showing the support and love and staying behind us this whole time Absolutely. And if you do want to uh, continue to support Movement Radio, check out streamlabs.com forward slash movement radio forward slash merch and go copy some merch. Uh, all of the photographs that we took this past weekend, if they're not already uploaded to the Facebook page or to the social medias, they will be within the upcoming weeks for the, those of you who wanted to know where can I find this photograph. And like what we said, as long as you subscribe and follow, you know, if you like the picture, tag yourself in the photograph. It's all for you guys anyway, and we do really, truly appreciate you guys and the love and support that you guys have been giving us. And uh, with that being said, again, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. I'm Talon Williams. I'm Chip Hazard. And I'm Roger Sierra. And this is Movement Radio. God's plan.